this time. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I got grub cooked for 25 cow hands. Where's the cow hands? Or maybe me and you's driving them mossy back Texas critters all the way to Nevada by ourselves. I'm telling you right now, I quit. This is the third time today you feathered out, hallelujah. I got a reason to be feathered out. Grub for 25 hands and spoiling there in the kettle. No one to eat it. They're coming on behind. I've been up since day. All 25 of them? All 25 of them. Cartwright, I don't know what you're thinking about, setting one man do all the cooking for a crowd like that. I've been up since daylight, cooking food, peeling potatoes, chalking the fire, chalking the fire. Throw up a picket line here. Is that our hands? No, just the advance party. They sure are a scroungy-looking bunch, ain't they? Well, I didn't have much choice. Not too many want to take a herd the way we're going. Brazos! Hoss, this is our new segundo. Brazos, my son Hoss. Hi. Brazos what? Brazos, that's all. Uh, Brazos rounded up our crew. He knows the country we'll be traveling. Where'd you round them up? Out of the nearest jail? Some of them, maybe. But driving cattle up the trail ain't exactly my idea of a church social. I want the hardest boys I can find. Well, it looks like you found them, mister. Uh, Brazos, uh, feed your men. We'll pull out at daybreak. And Brazos, let's not have any trouble. Trouble, Mr. Cartwright? You know, trouble only comes to those who can't handle it. Just below the rise. You were uh, driving a herd north? Now, what would put an idea like that in your head? We're just sashaying these critters up and down and down and up so they'll get an appetite for the vittles. Won't get too fat in the middle. Yeah. Trees right down there. Well, who's the trail boss? Mr. Ben Cartwright. I declare you're nothing but question. Here. Creek right there below the rise. Take about ten buckets to fill the barrel. Yes, sir. Uh, this here, Mr. Cartwright, is he uh, doing any hiring? Now, boy, I got a passel of hungry trail hands to feed, and I ain't got no time to waste answering foolish questions. Yes, sir. Well, maybe you could put in a, a word for me. My name's Sam Jackson. You are the dangest, gabbiest fellow when there's work to be done. Maybe I'll put a word in for you, and maybe I won't. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Who's that? Who's young fella riding grub line? He's be a nice, willing boy, too. Yeah. I see you done put him to work. Hallelujah. What do you got against cutting your own wood and hauling your own water? It ain't in keeping with my position. Mr. Horse, my job's driving mules and cooking, and I'll thank you to keep your big, fat, cow-smelly hands out of my donuts. My hands ain't neither cow-smelly. Well, if you want to eat, you go and help that boy get in some wood. Somebody got to haul me some water. Mr. Town, to buy me some goods. I myself walk in a piece of wood. 
Hallelujah, you undoubtedly got the worst voice I ever heard in my life. Good enough for the mules, they like it. They probably think you're some kin. <laughs> that axe ought not to be that heavy, kid. Ought to tuck you out like that. Don't you tell me nothing about axes. I've been swinging axes all my life. How many of them do you ever swing on an empty stomach? Yeah. You go nowhere and sit down. Oh, hallelujah, you ought to know better than send a man out on a job like this on an empty stomach. You looking for work? I sure am. What can you do? Ride, rope, drive cow. All right. I can read and write and cipher up to the 12 times table. You can. And I know more about cows than any of them ragged-tailed brush poppers you got in your drive. Well, that ain't saying a whole lot. Uh, that ought to be plenty. We don't want to spoil old hallelujah. Come on, let's pick our meal, take it up, and get on back. Okay. Hallelujah, this ought to hold you for a while. When are you going to get the rest of it? <laughs> Got us a new hand, Paul. Looks like I might tuck it out. Yeah, I reckon he ain't been feeding regular. Hey, kid, come here a minute. This is... Dang, I don't think I got your name. Uh, Sam Jackson. Sam? Sam's educated, boy. He can read and write and cipher and keep a tally book the whole shooting match. Well, you looking for a job, son? Well, yes, sir. I sure could use a job real handy. Hmm? Razos? Yes, sir. Sir, segundo. Razos, this is uh, Sam Jackson. Put him to work and fix him up with a string. All right, Mr. Cartwright. This way, Sam, and I'll get you fixed up. Looks like a nice boy. Something wrong? No, no, Paul. I reckon everything's all right. Kid. Sam Jackson, huh? When did they let you out, or did you bust out? Now, look, Brussels, let's get this straight. You don't ask me no questions, and I won't cause you no trouble. Now, you look. Nobody's causing anybody any trouble. Now, you and I always had the same kind of ideas, kid. And we still have. I went to jail. You didn't. Good book? Yeah, pretty good. Let me see. Hey, Paul. Pickwick Papers by Dickens. It's quite a book. You, uh, you like it? Well, yeah, I like it fine. I had it with me ever since I left home. Where is home, Sam? Back a ways. Back away is which way? Uh, I'm from Nagadosis. It's a fur piece. You don't sound much like a Texan. Well, I ain't to begin with. My mom moved down with her relatives after Pa died. Well, Sam, how come you happen to be on this trail? Well, uh, I thought I'd like to make something of myself. And there ain't much opportunity for that in a place like Nagadocious. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go check my horse. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. I like that boy. I said I like that boy. Yeah, I heard you, Paul. You know, it's bothering you. I don't know for certain, Paul. There's something about that boy. I can't lay to exactly what it is, but sort of the same thing I feel about the Colts every year at breaking time. They, they're a little uncertain and uneasy, and if you spook them the wrong way, they, they'll go bad on you every time. Johnny. 
Same old Johnny. Smooth with the tongue, fast on the draw. The name's Sam Jackson. Take it easy, kid. We gotta make some plans. What I'm doing is personal, something I gotta take care of myself, and I don't want you spoiling it, you hear? Oh, I ain't gonna spoil it, Johnny, but I went in on it. I got whipped out of town by that Sheriff Logan. I still got the marks on my back. Man, don't forget that. I'm sorry, Brazos. I'm going it alone this time. Part of their wages. You know, being entitled to it's one thing and money in the hands another. Them glutes hit town with money, they're gonna raise more devilment in one night than you've seen in your whole life. Or they'll treat that town like a possum. Hallelujah, will you tell me one thing? Sure. Why do folks name you Hallelujah instead of Jeremiah? Jeremiah. <laughs> Show him who's Jeremiah. Ain't you going to town with the rest of them border headings? I want to spend the money, Mr. Hicks. I'm saving. No. What you saving your money for, boy? Well, uh, I want to make something of myself, and it seems a man needs money to do that. You know, I worry when I hear a young fella talking like that. I really do. Ain't natural. <laughs> well, I understand you aim to hold your herd here. Plan on letting your men go into town? Any law against it? My name's John Logan. I'm sheriff for Waycross Station. I suggest you keep your men right here in camp. My name's Ben Cartwright, Mr. Logan. My hands have come a long way with that herd, Mr. Logan. Then tidal to ease up a little. I won't stop them from going into town. There's a deadline on Front Street. Any of your hands go above it, I'll run them in for disturbing the peace. If they resist, I'll kill them. Good day, sir. Mr. Logan, enforcing the law is one thing. Killing a man's another. You kill any of my men, I'll come after you myself. Mr. You've been fairly warned. Johnny? You made a mistake, mister. The name is Sam. Sam Jackson. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I made a mistake. I thought you were somebody I once knew. A long time ago. There's nothing like meeting old friends again, eh, kid? Changed my mind, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like some of my pay. Are you going into town after all? I'm going into town. This is it, Mr. Cartwright. What happens if we go beyond this point? What stops us? Two barrels a buck. <laughs> I guess it's as far as we go, boys. What kind of an outfit are you running, Captain? Letting a town constable push you around. Well, Brazos, I should have known you'd be along. You know my foreman? I know him. Don't pay any attention to this tin star. Don't mean a thing. Why? <laughs> go for your gun, Logan. I won't wait. Put down that gun. Put it down! There'll be no killing. I'll obey the law. The first man that starts anything will answer to me. That holds for you, Sheriff. 
You'll answer to me for any brutality to my crew. Just see that they obey the law. All right, man, the town's yours. That part of it. You heard the man. Sam, I want to talk to you. Why don't you throw in with process like that? He's riding trail with us, ain't he? Isn't that carrying loyalty to your outfit a little too far? What have you got against Sheriff Logan? Mr. Cartwright, I just don't know what you're talking about. Don't play cozy with me, boy. You answer my question. He's my pa. Your pa? You're gonna throw down on your own father? That's right. And just as soon as I get the chance, I'm gonna kill him. Exactly what I mean. I'm an honest businessman. No badge toad is going to come in here and tell me how to run that business. You're a tin horn cheat, and you'll do exactly as I tell you. I'll close up the street. Pass that around. Hostile, ain't he? He's ruined this town. You give a hundred dollars to be rid of him. If I were you, I wouldn't make that kind of an offer. Somebody will have to take you up on it. It's all right. <laughs> Pretty ancient. I guess so. Don't play Injun with me, boy. I can tell just looking at you what you're thinking. Want to meet her? Don't do me any favors, Brussels. I owe you a favor for siding me out on the street. Come on. Sam, meet Melinda Bowers. Melinda, meet Sam. He's all right. Well, I'd just love it if your friend would sit down and buy me a bottle of wine, Brazos. We could talk, get to know each other better. We well, sure could. Sam, buy the little lady a bottle of wine. I'd be real pleased, Miss Melinda. I'll order it for you. Logan? Well, what can I do for you two gentlemen? Mr. Logan, either my son or I would like to accompany you on your rounds. Oh? What good would that do? Well, you said you didn't want to see any trouble on the part of my crew. Thought we'd like to prevent that trouble before any of it ever gets started. And you think that your talk would be more effective than my scattergun? Well, they're my crew. Mr. Cartwright, how many trail drives have you made up from Texas? I've made my share. Mr. Cartwright, I drove a half a dozen herds before I turned peace officer. I didn't have any more control over my trail gangs than you do. I'm aware of the problems, Mr. Logan. Mr. Cartwright, you've got the scum of the border driving your herds. You're completely at their mercy. Now, you tromp on them hard enough to keep them in line, they'll quit you. Leaving you with two, three thousand head, 900 miles from a market. You can't afford that. They're my cattle. Let me worry about them. I'm not talking about cattle. I'm talking about some crazy, boozed-up trail hand. Thinks it might be fun to blow out all the glass windows on Main Street. Well, if he tries it, I'm going to have to stop him. And if I have to kill him, I'll do that, too. Don't you think that's a might unreasonable? Either of you men ever see a town get treed? No, sir, I can't say we have. Must be quite a sight. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a sight. Property smashed. Men beaten up for no reason at all except some drunken cowboy feels like it. Buildings set on fire. And the women. Oh, the women. A lot of broken, weeping women left in a town after it's been treed by a trail gang. 
I've heard of things like that happening. You've heard of it? Well, I've seen it right here less than two years ago. And you were foreman, Mr. Cartwright, a fellow they called Brazos. He was in on that Fandango. It was all over with. I tied him to the tail of a wagon and black snaked him out of town. Now he's come back, looking for more trouble. What about your son? Did you black snake him out of town, too? You know about that. I know about it. My son's pushing to get himself killed. I don't want to oblige him. Well, now it's started. What are you waiting for? about the meanest and baddest thing I've run into in my life. Why, a man could die downright happy just after shaking the hand of a mean killer like you. You want to shake my hand at all? Ain't gonna kill you? Why, sure, I tell you. It'd be an honor and a privilege getting killed by a bad man like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think tonight's a real good night for killing you. Hmm. You old friend. How can I ever think of killing an old friend like you? <laughs> <laughs> Take him down to the delivery stable and let him sleep it off, Paul. Good idea. <laughs> Can't you find anything better to do than sit in a saloon? I'll see you later. You two boys know each other? We met. What do you think you're up to, boy? I don't see as how that's any of your business, Mr. Cartwright. You signed on as one of my trail gang. Getting those cattle back to Nevada is my business. You stay away from Logan. Hey, keep this gentleman here for a while. What was that all about? Why don't I just buy you another bottle of wine, Miss Melinda? Some other time. I'm through work now. I'm going home. I'll walk you home. Well, what about that fellow you work for? You heard what he said. He didn't say anything about not taking you home. Been a long time since anybody worried about me getting home. I'll get my key. <laughs> you and a little lady hitting it off pretty good, ain't you, kid? You gonna take her home? Yeah. She lives across the deadline. You know what that means, don't you? I said I was taking the lady home. You ready? I'm ready. Something on your mind, cowboy? I was wondering about you. Your face don't match the way you talk. And sometimes your talk don't match well the things you do. Well, I'm sorry I don't have time to explain it to you. This is far as you go. That's Sheriff Logan's deadline. Warn it. Trail hands forbidden beyond this point. You read good. That means you. I don't care about that tin horn, Sheriff. I'm walking you home. All right. 
We don't have far to go. I live right around the corner at the hotel. Miss Bowers? Why don't you call me Melinda? Other cowboys do. Well, there's something I'd kind of like to ask you. I'll bet a pretty it's going to be, how did I ever get into this life? I didn't mean to pry. No, it's all right. I'm used to it. What I meant was, well, you ain't always worked at Jake Rudabaugh's saloon, have you? Ever since those men on that trail gang, I did. What trail gang? What men are you talking about? Just a bunch of fellas having a good time, at least to start with. Men like yourself and Brazos and the rest of you. There was one I liked a lot. Had more fun I ever had in my whole life. But then they went wild and hoorahed the town. By the time John Logan organized things and cleaned them out, well, the decent folks just wouldn't give a job to anybody that had anything to do with the trail gang. So there was nothing left for me to do but go to Rudabaugh's saloon. Sounds to me like all you was doing was having a little fun. Try and tell that to the good people of Waycross. Good night, kid. Good night, Melinda. Now, there's a lot more to being a peace officer than just busting up fights. Now, when there's a trail gang in town, I make the rounds all night long. Never try to walk the same route twice. You might run into some... Evening, Hoss. What are you doing here? You're over the deadline. I can't see as I'm doing any harm. No, you never did any harm, did you? Well, I'm taking you in. Mr. Logan, you ain't taking me in. I told you a long time ago, you ain't never taking me in again. And don't you even try! Thanks. Help me take him in. In there. you figuring on leaving him in there? Overnight, anyway. If somebody wants to take responsibility for him, they can bail him out in the morning. Sam, I'm sorry to see you get yourself into this trouble. I reckon you kind of brought it on yourself going across that deadline, though. If it wasn't this, it'd have been something else. He's out to get me, is all it is. He always has been. Oh, Sam, I, I can't believe that. What do you know about it? You want to know what kind of a father he is? He sent me to prison when I was just a kid. Prison? What'd you do to go to prison? Nothing. Not a thing. I was running around with some fellas. Brazos was one of them. They hoorahed a town one night. Just letting off some steam. Or some woman got hit by a stray bullet. Could have been anybody's bullet. But I spent a year in jail because my pa wanted to show the world how tough he was. Sam, did, did you ever think that maybe he did that to save you some bigger trouble later on? Yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it plenty. All the time I was locked up, I thought about how I was going to get back at him for what he'd done to me. Boy, you, you can't carry that with you the rest of your life. Oh, I don't intend to. I'm going to kill him. Don't 
Put it on until you're well out of town. Wait for me outside, Sam. I told you not to lean too hard on my men. And I told you what the limits were and what would happen if your men set foot over that line. The boy was doing no harm. He broke an ordinance. Whose ordinance? The town's or your own little ordinance? I can appreciate a hard man doing a hard job the hard way. I can understand, I can like a tough man. But I can't understand and I cannot like a man who would do a thing like this to his own son. I never let personal considerations interfere with the law. Is that why your son was so willing to kill you when you placed him under arrest? Mr. Cartwright, that's none of your business. Now, see here, John. Let's talk this over like sensible men. The town is losing money. Judge Armbrist is right, Logan. It isn't just this crew we'll lose money on, but all the other crews coming up the trail behind them. If they find out the town's closed, they'll avoid us like the seven-year itch. This town used to collect six, seven hundred dollars in fines alone from trail hands. Almost enough to pay your year's salary, John. Seventy-five percent of that money went right into your pocket, Judge. Your court clerk got the rest of it. Ah, uh, now look here. Don't care nothing. When you brought me here, you brought me here to clean up this town. There's only one way to do it. Let's keep it closed. Closed tight. There'll be no compromise while I'm sheriff. Well, maybe you won't be sheriff much longer. All right, do it your way for a while. When you're sick of it, let me know. I'll be here waiting. A good day, gentlemen. See, hallelujah, about that cut on your face. Hello, you. Take a look at this, please. You hear the owl? Seen the elephant, huh? Sit down, Ernest. Do let me have a look at that face. It's fine. That horse got a real professional touch when it comes to buffalo. Yes, sir. That boy learned how to take care of his little brother. Seems those two never go to town on Saturday night. Horse don't come home carrying little Joe across the saddle. Bet he saved his skin a hundred times or more just trying to keep him out of trouble. Didn't keep me out of trouble. You know, in the way it was told to me, that don't amount to much. Slow down your eating for a couple of days. Don't spoil your appetite. What happened, Johnny? It's like I told you, man. I'll not try to do a job alone. I'll get to Logan yet. Sure, Johnny. But now we'll do it my way. Now, Logan's plum ticklish about that town of his. If we were to ride in there and start taking it apart... I told you before, this is something between him and me, personal. But you wouldn't object to me and the boys flushing him out into the open for you, would you? Rosos? Yes, sir. I said we'd do it my way, Johnny. Yes, sir. Rosos have decided to pull out first thing tomorrow morning. Was well, that right, Captain? No. Well, in that case, I better try to get the boys back from town early. Nobody goes to town. You've had your fun. Go back into town, it'll mean trouble. Well, that's right, Captain. Uh, but if you try to stop me and my boys from going back, that's going to cause trouble, too. Unless you figure that it's no trouble for you and that boy of yours and that stove-up cook of yours to drive this herd to Nevada all by yourselves. You threatening me, Brazos? Oh, now, now, Captain, don't get sudden. There's no call for it. No call for it at all. It's just that I've got a personal interest in Sheriff Logan and that town of his. No man black snakes me and gets away with it. I'm not interested in your personal grudges. You ain't, Captain. Well, you should be. The rest of these boys, they're interested in my personal grudges, ain't you, boys? I guess I should have told you at the start of this drive, Captain. These boys do what I say, not what you say. Pack your war bag and get. The rest 
of you settle down. You hide on his trail hands, and by thunder, you'll finish this job. You're going to have to back that up, Captain. All right, boys. Tell him to put his gun away. Boss. How about you, Johnny? You coming along? You kind of wanted to pay your paw another visit, didn't you? Stay out of this, Sam. I don't reckon I can stay out of this, Mr. Cartwright. I got a personal grudge, too, that ain't finished yet. How about you, Cookie? I'm sticking with the captain. Well, suit yourself and get over here. All right, you two. Take their guns and keep your eyes on them. I don't want anybody spoiling our fun. Come on, boys! After last night, we wanted a chance to show you just how sorry we were for what happened. Judge John Brewster, tell these men what we decided on for today. Well, we want to see you boys enjoy yourselves. Spend your money on our stores. We've lifted Sheriff Logan's deadline, and our merchants are staying up late in order to serve you. The town is yours. Well, ain't that nice. Boys, ain't that the nicest thing you ever heard in your lives? <laughs> Tell you what, Judge. Maybe you can get Sheriff Logan to come down and have a drink with us. Socialize a little. Well, I'm afraid, sir, I have no control over Sheriff Logan's movements. Well, what kind of a judge do you call that? Boys, I just elected a new judge, namely me. <laughs> sir. You're in contempt of court, mister. Show the man how we treat contempt of court. Oh, oh Judge, meet the boys. You boys got stuck with this job, miss all the fun. Say nothing, all the liquid refreshments. Yeah. Old brother's probably buying drinks for everybody in town, don't you reckon, Hallelujah? <laughs> yeah, buying them or stealing them. Anyway, he's getting them. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. You still got that, uh, that bottle of whiskey back there? Sure have, Captain. We ain't had many snake bites this trip. <laughs> Will you fellas care for a swallow? I oh, no better than ask you. Now, let me see. Where did I hide that the last time? Oh, he's getting... It ought to be in here somewhere, right next to the beans. Find it yet? Not yet. I'll find her. She's around here somewhere. Let's see, I had it right behind the flower night before last. I'll find her. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. I know it was there somewhere. <laughs> What's left in it? Here, Captain. Yeah. Ooh. What you put in that bottle? Coal oil. Didn't think I'd leave any whiskey in the bottle, did you? Yeah, well, I'll have to bring you back a full bottle of whiskey from town. Hey, look out for things. Already come out, Brazos. What's he waiting for? He'll make his play when he's ready. Why wait on him? Let's go in after him now. You hurry. We got plenty of time. The boys ain't hardly looking up enough yet. Hey, 
Satisfied, Mr. Cartwright? Did you take a good look at what can happen to a town? You were right, Sheriff. We couldn't control them. And you can't control them now. It's just going to have to run its course. Mr. Logan, you got a job to do, and you're getting paid to do it. Paid to do it? The good citizens of this town told me not to interfere with their money-making enterprises. Well, it's those enterprises that pay my salary. I was reminded of that. You mean you're not going to do anything to... To stop them out there? I am going to sit right here until I get orders from the people who pay me. Since when do you wait for orders? Uh, what's your real reason, Logan? What do you mean? Your son is out there with that gang. Could that have anything to do with your decision to stay here inside? What are you ashamed of, Logan? Being a father? What do you want me to do? Go out there and kill my boy? <laughs> Buy your bottle of wine, kid? I owe you one. What are you doing here? You think of a better place? After all that's happened, I didn't think you'd come back. Why? Just another trail gang to me. It's happened before and it'll happen again. It's always the same. You don't think things can change? Sure, they can change. Enough people decide to back up Sheriff Logan. Well, I wouldn't count on him for anything. Then you don't know him very well. He's my father. Your father? That's right. And I'm here to kill him. <laughs> Hi, Sam. I wonder what I tell you. He's a pretty good boy, ain't he? Yeah. He's the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. What's the matter with her? Nothing. Ain't it time yet? Yeah, it's time. Come on, boys, let's go! It's time. Logan. Don't you go out to him. Come on out! Let me talk to him. He's my boy. He's my problem. I've been waiting for this for a long time, Mr. Logan. Make your move. Stupid kid, shoot! 
Are you yelling no good? Look out, Logan! It's your father, boy. Ain't you gonna help him? Are you all right? Sure, son. All right, men. We still got a bunch of cows to drive to Nevada. Those pig stickers mean what I think they mean? Yeah, Indian for barbed wire. Why? Oh, graves. Indians here about believe their ancestors are buried yonder. They call it the mountain of the dead. Sort of a sacred burial ground? Yeah, I guess you might say that. Even the Indians won't go much past here. Hey, wait a minute. We're not going in there, are we? Of course we're going in there. Burial ground or no burial ground. That's the best fur trapping country west of the Missouri. Trappers passed the lances. They set foot on the mountain. They were punished. We are not here to take scalps, but to find the spirit of white buffalo woman. Daco, you are my son, but I ask that you go beyond the place of the forbidden stone to seek the spirit. If my brother is to go beyond the Forbidden Stone, I will go with him, my father. You know that you go to your death. We know, father. Dark. Toka. By these tokens of my medicine, the spirit woman will know you, my sons. You must not fail. Our lives are pledged, father. Let the lances remain as a warning to others.
I wouldn't. Because we've got cattle to move. That's why. We've got fences to build, timber to cut. What do you mean, I wouldn't? Right now, this is Yorktown, Bunker Hill, and Valley Forge all rolled into one. I'll say this just once more. This is no time for a trip to Nevada City. Pause winning. The only time. If I miss Ira Fairbanks this trip, who knows when I'll get another chance to see his windmill. Listen, any time Adam's talking like that, he's winning. Now, you know as well as I that we have Roundup facing us next week, and you talk to me about windmills. Yes, windmills. And you know as well as I that it'll take a miracle to get the water up on that north section, and Fairbanks' windmill might be it. Fairbanks' windmill. All this man has is a theory. We know nothing about him or his reputation. Now, you can't leave a shorthanded just to go to talk to a man who's probably a, a crackpot. Crackpot? Yes, crackpot. A long time ago, a man fooled around with a thing he called a cotton gin. His name was Whitney, and they called him a crackpot, too. And they said the same thing about a man called what? Until his steam engine made history. And before that, there was a man who thought the world was round. You missed one. Who? In between those last two gentlemen you mentioned, there was another man who rode around looking for windmills. And his name was Don Quixote, and he was a crackpot. You and your education. Education is progress. Now, what have you got against it? I don't have anything against education. As long as it doesn't interfere with your thinking. All right. Let's get back as soon as you can. Thanks, Pa. Hey, Adam, what... <sighs> nice day for a ride. Hey, Paul, I'd have bet you'd have won that argument. Windmills. I guess a man just has to do something about him. Spirit woman. I carry the medicine of the Shoshone and the power of our shaman, my father Chato. Our people die in their lodges. We have need of your medicine. I am sorry that you people are sick, but there is nothing I can do for them. I have already watched my life. My people wait. I am sorry. I promise to bring you back. You are flesh. You, you are as I, as other people, even as a young squaw of our tribe. Please, you must not do that. You must not touch me. I touch you, and I live. My father would not believe that... I don't care about your father. Let me be. 
I will take you to my father. He must see that you are nothing but a white squaw, that you cannot help the Shoshone, that your very presence here on this mountain of our dead is a shame and a desecration. Get away from me. I don't care about your superstitions. Stand up for me. I know what would happen in your village. You would kill me. Squaw, I would kill you here and now. Put it down. I said, put it down! Who are you? Help me. Come back! I couldn't hurt you if I wanted to. If I wanted your life, I would not have returned. Will you tell me who you are? I'm called White Buffalo Woman. White Buffalo Woman? The spirit woman or the legends of the Plains Indians? I hope you know what you're doing. Don't move. The great white warrior.
Hello? Hello? Anyone here? Olaf Halverson, born 1810, Bergen, Norway. Married to Elizabeth Carr, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 1838. Daughter Ruth, born August 3rd, 1840. Wife died 1846. July 14th. We left St. Joe this morning. The soldiers said it was too late in the season to start, but Daddy laughed at them. He is not afraid, for at home in Norway, he was used to hard winters and heavy snow in the mountains. October 8th. Our axle is broken, and Daddy left yesterday in the morning and hasn't come back yet. It is cold, and we can hear the howling of the wolves. That blade would not have missed in the lodge of a bannock. And in the home of... Ruth Halverson? You heard my name? A white buffalo woman is a myth. But Ruth Halverson is, or was, real. Remember this. You are here because you helped me. Stay until you can travel. But keep away from me or I'll forget I owe you anything. In other words, welcome. Aside from your many other accomplishments, I see you also run a trap line. I trade the pelts for supplies. Well, now I'm a fair hand with hides. Uh, could I help? Until I can travel, you're going to have to put up with me. Now, there's no reason why we can't try to understand each other. How? We could start with Ruth Halverson. Ruth Halverson was a child. What happened after your father left the wagon? I never saw him again. In the spring, a Bannock hunting party found me. They took me to their village. I stayed there. As one of them. Until the hunters came. White hunters. They wanted our furs. And when we refused, they attacked us. All the braves, the women, the children, they killed. I. I found my way here, to the mountain of the dead. Shoshone saw me, told his people he had seen white buffalo woman raised from the grave. To them, I'm a great spirit woman.
until today they have left me in peace here in my own world to live my own life Ruth the only real life for you is with your own people since the Bannocks died I have no people Where are my sons? We waited at the place of the Forbidden Stone. There is no sign of Daco or Tolka. They would have returned by now if they could. My sons have failed. But perhaps where a son fails, a father can succeed. I will go to the Mountain of the Dead. We shall go with you, Shaman. They call this the Mountain of the Dead. Uh, nothing, uh, it doesn't matter. Wait. Is something wrong with you? No, there's uh, nothing wrong with me. That's just it. Then what is it you want? Well, I, uh, uh there was a razor with your Bible. I, uh, well, it can wait. Why do you want a razor? Well, for shaving. Shaving? Uh, well, uh, you can't remember it. It's, uh, it's a little difficult to describe. You see, most men... Uh... I know. I remember watching my father. I'll get it for you. Uh, no, 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 no. It can wait. There is something the matter. What is it? Um, my education uh, just interfered with my thinking for a minute. But it's all right. Paul. Hmm? Paul Adams' horse just came in. Adams' horse? Yes, sir. He still got the saddle on him. No marks on him, Pa. No nothing. Oh, it seems to be all right. Yeah. Nobody's ridden him for a while either. Yeah. Fool boy. Probably got down for water. Come on, Pa. You know better than that. Paul, oh, I think we ought to go after him. Joe, you get some food ready. All right, Pa. Hoss. Settle up the horses. Better bring a spare. My father had a big strap to make his razor sharp. Does it hurt? A little. Has to be done, though. Otherwise, the beard would be down here. Uh, some men let the beards grow, but uh, others shave them off. Ouch. <laughs> I, 
I think you would be better off with your beard down to here. You know, I think maybe you're right. <laughs> you're very nice when you smile. You've done enough. I can finish. It looks much better. Naturally, it takes a real engineer. <laughs> Let me help oh. you. Wow. Any time. Sit down. Building a roof with one leg. Man has to earn his keep. Not with a wound like this. Do you know what your name means? My name? Ruth. Means compassion. Did he? Until now, I never believed it. You will be able to leave very soon. Why are you afraid of me? I fear no man. Ruth? You forgot this. No, Kaska, no. Do you too wish to be struck down by the medicine of the white buffalo woman as my son was? Her powers are greater than all the medicine of the Shoshone. That is why she must go back with us. Only she can save our people from the great sickness. Tiawa, Kaska, find her camp, then return to me. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. You read very well. The Old Testament book of Ruth. Like you, she, uh, she had gone into a strange land. And the name of the man was... Eli Melech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. Entreat me not to leave thee. Or to return from following after thee. A long time ago, my father used to read it to me. That part of my life died with him. Finish the quotation. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Ruth, come back with me. Back? Where? Where you belong. Leave white buffalo woman where she belongs, with the graves of the past. I found peace here. The people who are buried here have found peace. What you found is a hiding place. What can your world offer me that I don't have right here? People of your own kind. I know nothing but evil of my father's people. Look, Ruth, you say this is your home where you belong. Well, it, it can't be. Why can't it be? Because you're alone. I have a, a stubborn father and two hard-headed brothers. To me, they're home, no matter where they live. Well, I, I have no one. On this mountain, you're a legend, and a legend leads a lonely life. In the world out there, you wouldn't be alone. Music, books, sound of laughter. All you have to do is, is come back. 
and let me do the rest. Ruth, come back with me. No, no, let me be. Ruth, Ruth, you can't keep on running. Whatever you're hiding from must be faced, and now. I can't. Please let Ruth, me go. Ruth, tell me, Ruth, tell me now what really happened. Two of those men caught me. I fell and, and they were they were there laughing. They grabbed me and one of them one of them hit me and I got my hand on a knife. His face. He screamed. And I broke away and ran. And ran. And now you can forget it. Chato, shaman of the Shoshone, brings you tribute. I accept your tribute, Chato. But not your presence here with your warriors. Only the spirit of the great white buffalo woman can conquer the sickness that has come to our lodges. My heart cries for you people. But the white buffalo woman must stay here with the ashes of the past. The ashes of the past are the lies of a white man. To the spirit woman, Chato, all men are brothers. It is for me to judge who is welcome on the mountain of the dead. You have my answer. Take your warriors. You must go. Not without you. But Adam, don't you understand? They'll kill you. I won't go without you. Then we'll find a way past the Shoshone together. Wait here and watch. When the white man is alone, take him alive. She will hear my words or watch him die. Dear Lord, accept these souls into heaven. May they rest in peace forever and ever. Amen. And from the signs, Adam got this far. But he didn't meet the same fate these two trappers did. Now, where do you think he'd go from here? Must have gone into the mountain. Adam would know better than that. And maybe he had no choice. Well, we're not going to find him standing around here. You weren't asleep at all. Didn't you ever hear of the spider and the fly? Now I know why they gave me my name. 
My folks must have known that I belonged in the Garden of Eden. I wonder if they knew about me and Ashoshone. Ruth, we'll leave tonight. I want you to have something. When a man is betrothed to a woman, he gives her a ring. And as long as she wears that ring, they belong to each other. Adam, I will be your wife. I love you very much. Love, honor, and obey. I kind of like that last word. That last word, Mr. Cartwright, we'll talk about when I get back. Adam? It's a beautiful ring. I must have missed something. There's only one thing to do. We'll go back to where we buried those trappers. we we'll start all over again. We'll turn over every rock if we have to.
Shall I bring the spirit woman now? No, Koska. The spirit woman must come to us willingly. She won't come here. She will for you. It won't work. You got the wrong bait. She is here. Ruth, get out of here! You dare violate the sacred lodge, a white buffalo woman? You would not hear my words. And this one? Did the Shoshone make war with the wounded? My people must have the medicine of the spirit woman, or they will die. And a white man? He will die, unless you go with us. Release him, or you will die now by the hand of white buffalo woman. Then destroy us now. We will not go without you. My people need you. Ruth, don't! Stop! Spare his life. And you shall have the medicine of white buffalo woman. Cut him loose. Oh, you can't. I won't let you do it, baby. Ruth, Ruth, no, don't no, run. Get out of here, Ruth. Ruth, go. Whither thou goest, I will go. I'm ready, Shaman. When we are beyond the mountain of the dead, take him to the camp of the spirit woman. He will find his way back to his people. I'm ready, Shaman. We must hurry, spirit woman. Already too many of our people lie dead. Even your sons? Even my sons. We will do all we can for the Shoshone who still live. like you tangled with a grizzly. Yeah, got beat. Shoshone took Ruth. Who? The girl that saved my life. She lives here. Girl here? Yeah. Fever. She's not imaginary, she's real. Her name's Ruth Halverson. There's a Bible in the hut. How come the Shoshone took her, Adam? I thought she was a spirit. Reincarnation of one of their gods. I'm going after her. I gotta find her. You try to stop me, I'll walk all over you. Both of you. Huh? Found a Bible. Some writing in the front. There's Olaf Halverson, daughter Ruth, born 1840. There's something inside marking a page. If 
I gave her this ring. I wanted to marry her. If she left this ring behind, then she must have gone of her own free will. She did it to save my life. That's why I've got to go after her. If you do that, you sign her death warrant for sure. Now, she, she's a girl. She's not a spirit woman. That's true, but the Shoshone believes she is. And if you destroy that belief in her, you destroy her. You destroy them, too. That's right, Adam. If they believe in her that strongly, then maybe she'll be able to be of some help to them. You've got to let her go for now, Adam. Maybe someday... Come on, let's get some food. Don't run away now. Albie isn't gonna hurt you. You're real pretty. Albie! Well, hello there, little Joe. Well, leave her alone, Albie. You're scaring her. Now, what are you doing up here on the mountain? It's on my way to Placerville. Come on, Albie, you're hurting her. Oh, I'm the only friend she's got up here, ain't I, Annie? At least why she don't give me no back talk like the other women. She's not an animal in one of your traps. Now let her go. I ain't hurting her. I'm just saying hello. Oh, you better not hurt her. Not ever. You don't belong up here. This ain't your country. Best you mind your own business. You bother Annie, I'll make it my business. This is my country, and I'm going to see it stays that way.
God, stop working so hard, Sam. You got company. Huh. Sorry, little Joe. I got a touch of fever. Figured this might sweat it out of me. All right, feeling any better? Hey, I brought you that gun barrel Pa said you needed. And I got a little present for Annie. <laughs> Waste of time bringing her anything. Just leave her be. Hey, Sam, look. She's pretending she's a tree. Foolishness. Can't hear, can't talk. Don't understand no more than them dumb beasts she tends. No use bringing her presents, little Joe. Ah, uh, come on, Sam. Anybody understands getting a present. Suit yourself. Getting on towards dinner, you're welcome to share it, such as it is. Thank you. Hey, look, I, uh, I brought you a little present. Here, wait a second, let me get it. I thought, I thought I'd bring it as long as I was coming. It's not much. Well, come on, it's not gonna bite you. Well, come on, take it, it's for you. Here, wait a sec. Here. It's not much, just, just a rag doll. Don't worry, I'm not going to take it back. Now, you, you... You go right ahead and enjoy it. Well, so long. Well, I'll, I'll see you. So long. It's good talking to you, little Joe. Man gets out of the habit with nobody around to listen. Why do you stay up here, Sam? It's best. Well, maybe it's best for you, but what about Annie? Must be something terrible wrong with a man. To father a child like her. Killed her ma, bringing her into the world. I reckon it ain't too much punishment for me to raise her. It was just an accident, the way she was born. It's not your fault. No more! I won't hear no more about her. Not from you, and nobody. Okay, Sam. I'll help you move the rest of those sheep before I start out for Placid. I knew a couple dozen sheep could be so ornery. Almost as bad as people. You know, that's funny. Yeah, you know, I've been talking to you all day, and I know you can't hear a word I'm saying. <laughs> hey, what are you looking at now? Hey, that's what I call a right pretty girl. Hey, look over here. Look at that fellow right there, that's that handsome Joe Cartwright. It's the guy that's always watching me when I'm shaving. I just can't seem to get rid of him. <laughs> All right, what are you trying to fool me with now? Step behind your back. Hey, well, that, that's real beautiful. Sure is pretty. I guess you don't need to know how to talk to say everything. Thanks. I, I, 
I wish I could make you understand. Hey, look. Look, I'm, I'm trying to tell you I like it. Thank you. Preacher. Albie. Hey, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Albie. You been walking in the way of the Lord? Well, I've, I've been doing a lot of walking. Uh, uh, seeing you were up here near spring the last time you came by here. No, I guess it was. You dropping in on Sam, too? Well, you don't think I'd be swapping tails and telling news of that Annie? She's a child of God, son, for all the way he made her. Well, that, that's a fact, Preacher. How about you? About time you married and raised a family, isn't it? Plenty of unmarried girls in town. Town girl once said I had the smell of a trapper on me. It's like meat that's not cured right. You'll find the right girl soon enough. Come on now. The word of the law will conquer mind and your soul. For thou writest bitter things against me, and wilt consume me for the sins of my youth. Hey, Amen. I'm paying for my sins, preacher. Paying. You, Sam? That why you always getting them children fever? Every man is tempted by the devil, Albie. is man's only salvation. True, preacher, true. If I could only read the Lord's word, I could bear up under his suffering. Uh, even if you could read, Sam, who would you read it to? Getting cramped sitting all this time. Think I'll go out for a while. Man born of woman living a short life is filled with many miseries. Who will make him clean that is conceived of unclean seed? You ain't got much that's better, have you? Huh? No matter what you are, you sure are pretty. Look, you must get lonesome, too. Look, I'm try just trying to be nice to you, that's all. Come on. Come on. I've been trapping for over a week. Man likes a woman to be waiting when he gets back. Come on. Come on. What are you, some sort of stick of wood or something? Come on. You can't hear, you can't talk. Haven't you got any feelings? There, that's not so bad now, is it, huh? Allie, where are you? You in there in that shed? Come on, preacher! I'm not finished with you yet. I'll be back.
What are you doing in that shed, uh, Albie? Well, I'm just helping Sam catch up with his chores, preacher. Oh, that's good of you, Albie. Sam's got a lot of fever. Be a good idea if you stop around whenever you can. Don't worry, preacher. I'm going to be around a lot more now. Good. Doing here, girl. You should be out with the sheep. What are you hiding? Out with it, girl. I've warned you. Never touch me money pouch. Corrupted by your present. You've done an evil thing. You must be punished. At least if you can't hear, I know you can feel. I take no joy in hurting you. I'm your father. It's my duty to teach you right and wrong as best I can. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Look at me with them sad eyes. I can't stand to see suffering written on your face and not a word coming from your tongue, not even sobbing. Put it back so you'll remember. Never do it again. Come on! All right, it's really for you anyway, huh? What do you see what it is? See, I got to talk to this doctor in, in Placerville, and I told him all about you, and he gave me this. Here, here, take it. Hey, Sam! Sam! It's a, it's a book of sign language, and, and you, you can learn to talk once you, once you understand these signs. It's not hard either, because I learned a whole bunch of them on the way out here. I assure you, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Come on. Come on. Now listen. You can learn to talk and to hear, just like other people, only with these with your hands. Well, let me see how I'm gonna do this. First page. Now, now look. A flower. See the picture? A flower, just like the picture. A flower, you see? Flower. This is the sign. Flower. Now you do it. 
All right, watch me once more. Flower. Just like you're smelling a real nice flower. What's the matter? Look, there's, there's nothing in my hand. I'm not trying to fool you. Forget that. We're gonna go to another one. Girl. You. Girl. Girl, because your cheek's real, real nice and soft. Give me your hand. Just like that. Girl. Wow. Boy. Boy. Just, just like tipping my hat. A boy. Like you tip, tip my hat. You don't understand, do you? It's gonna be a lot tougher than I thought. Jeez, I can't make it any plainer. I don't know why you can't understand it. That's it! That's it! What's this for? Oh, Annie. Look, this isn't some kind of a game. I'm doing my best to, to teach you the sign language. Look, I want you to be able to talk and to understand people when they talk to you. Can't you see that? Well, I guess you never will. You couldn't hear that. Of course you feel it. Here. Here, you feel that? That's what talking is. Feel it. Here. Feel it. Feel the ground. Look, you can talk like that. Look. See that? I'm talking to you with my hands. You understand. You do understand. This girl. Boy. Boy, tipping your hat. A beautiful flower. There isn't a person who can talk or hear that can ever understand the way you feel. I'm so happy. trying to tell me that there's any hope when I've lived my whole life with the weight of a pressing on me heart like a stone. Now, will you watch, Sam? You see for yourself. Now, you are going to talk to your father. Understand? Boy. Girl. Flower. Book. That ain't talking. That's just like Indian sign. That's right. That's right, only better. You're a fool, little Joe. She's just waving her arms around. How do you know she understands what she's doing? See for yourself she understands. All right. You know what them signs mean, do you? You, girl. He, boy. What am I? 
What am I? What am I? What am I? I'm scaring her, Sam. I tell you, she does understand. No! 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 She's not an animal, Sam. Help her. Bring her to town if you don't believe me. Let the doctor see her. No doctor can give that poor girl what she was robbed of at birth. She'll never change. She can learn to understand, but not if you don't help her, not if you don't give her a chance. Sam. Look at her, she's talking to you with her hands. She's telling you she went out into the rain and got the book. Now do you believe me? She's not one of your sheep, Sam. She's your daughter. I'll save the doc, Sam. got killed. Ain't that the old coot who lives up in the mountains? Yeah, Sam Croft. He only comes down about twice a year. You know, I, I thought he lived by himself. <laughs> he, he's been holding out on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where'd you get a pretty little thing like her, huh? You been holding out on us, Sam? Uh, what do you want, Tom? Well, you went out and got yourself a little company, huh? She's, she's my daughter. Who are you trying to fool? Leave us alone. Has old Sam been treating you right? Hmm? Well, what do you say? I'm talking to you. She, she don't talk much to strangers. Well, now, how come? Is she too good for fellows like us? Huh? Yeah, let me get a good look at her. No, no, don't. Give, give me that. <laughs> you want it, Sam? Well, you got to come and take it. Oh, no, no, please, leave us alone. We ain't doing you no harm. Now, Sam, if the girl wants a bonnet, let her ask for it. Real pretty like, huh? Now, I bet I can make you talk to us. Now, leave her alone. Oh, no. Leave her alone. Oh, oh Sam, where oh, you no, going? No, no. Leave her alone. It's only that old mountain goat, Sam Croft. Get out of here. Come on, Pappy. <laughs> he ain't worth shooting. Oh, we're just having a little fun. You both all right? We ain't hurt. 
Good. Come on, Sam. The doctor's in. No, we ain't going to no doctor. We shouldn't have come here in the first place. Shouldn't have listened to you. What's the matter? What are you talking about? We belong in the mountains. Me and the girl both. We ain't fit for no town. And the town ain't fit for us. Sam, for once, think of what's right for Anne. That's who I'm thinking of. Now get out of my way. <laughs> How's it coming along, son? You know, you've been spending much more time up at the crops these past few months than here. Paya just wouldn't believe it. Why, well, Anne's learned so much already. We can carry on a regular conversation. Uh, how's Sam Croft? Still as stubborn about it as ever? That man's impossible. He told me he'd never let us see the doctor, not ever. I sure hope I can get him to change his mind. Joe. You don't think you're, uh, over your head? Oh, uh, what do you mean? Well, sometimes it's best not to, you know, push people too hard and leave well enough alone. Now, why should I leave him alone? He's not going to help her. Somebody has to. No, no. Sometimes helping looks like meddling. Don't worry, Pa. I know the difference. Joe, take care of yourself up there. Sure I will, Pa. Sam! Sam, you in there? Awful lonely out in the traps. What's that? A new kind of game? Huh? You want me to play a little game with you? Huh? Gotcha. Old Albie's missed you a lot, but he's gonna make it all up to you. What oh, now? Sam, there no need to bring a gun up on me. Get away from her. And keep away. I don't see you running Joe Cartwright off a of hill. Maybe you think he's a better man than I. Joe Cartwright's teaching her to talk. I'll bet you he's teaching her to talk. Move, or I'll blow your head off. All right. All right, Sam. Just remember, with all that money and all them girls in town, Joe Cartwright ain't interested in marrying anyone like Annie. <laughs> all right. This is the last one for today. This is going to be a tough one. Love. Love. Your father helps you. Your father gives you food. You live in your father's house. You love your father. Your father loves you. Uh, you see, I could say, uh, you love flowers, and you'd know that it was good. I teach you to talk, yeah. No, 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 you, that's wrong. See, you don't love me. Now, that is wrong. You 
don't love me. Now look, you don't love me. You don't love me and I don't love you. Please look at All of a sudden, for no reason, she, she tried to kiss me. She tried to kiss you? Well, she did kiss me, as a matter of fact. I guess she got upset and she ran away. I should have been watching you all along. You should have been watching me. You should have been watching me. You should have been helping me teach her and... Instead of being so stubborn. Teaching our what? Kissing? All kinds of sin? You keep away from her. All right, Sam. All right, I'll keep away from her. You're her father. You tried teaching her for a change. Goodbye, little Joe Cartwright. Anne! Anne! Hello, Sam. I'm looking for Anne. I told you I didn't like a gun thrown on me. How's it feel? Where's Ann? Have you got a... No, I ain't got a, but I will have after you meet with an accident. You see, Sam, I'm gonna be a hero. I'm gonna take care of Annie after you die in an accident. You just walked out. Well, what was I supposed to do? She completely misunderstood. Oh, and then her father. I go in and I try to explain it to him, and he starts, like, starts accusing me of all kinds of things. It's really funny. He doesn't try to help her himself. If you insisted on starting this, you can't walk out before you finish it. I understand that. I'm not a little kid. Aren't you? If you understand it and still walk out, then you're just a little kid. Now, wait a minute. Don't you raise your voice to me, boy. And don't you call me a little kid. Joe, you opened a door to the world for this girl. You let her look out for the first time. Now, her gratitude for you must be overwhelming, to say the least. All right, fine. Fine. All I was trying to do was help her. You can't shove someone into the water and then not wait around to see if they can swim. She has a father. No. You started it. You were the one who tampered with those two lives, and you can't abandon them now. Well, what do you want me to do, marry her? Help 
me, Pa. I don't know what to do. Go back. No, I can't. I can't go back there and hurt her anymore. You must make her understand that what she feels for you is gratitude, not love. Oh, she'll be hurt a little bit, but she'll get over it. If you don't go back, she'll remain hurt forever. I think I'll go for a ride. here, hidden, ashamed of me own flesh and blood. Forgive me, daughter, if you can. I love you, and I always did. Be back sooner or later. You still playing games with me? I'm gonna teach you more than Joe Cartwright ever did. You worried about your pa? Your pa ain't coming back. You're gonna stay with me. All right now, look now. Just take it easy. You be nice to Albie, and Albie's gonna be nice to you. I'll even buy you a new dress. What happened? Your father. Hurt. Needs help. Where? He fell. Stay out of this, Cartwright. You do this to her, Albie? What's she trying to tell you? What happened to Sam? What are you talking about? Annie says Sam's been hurt. Now, don't fool with me. You know she can't talk. You can't see, Albie?
What did the doctor say? They said he'd be all right, but he'll need a lot of care. Did you, uh, have you spoken to her yet about? Yeah. Good. You better tell her her father will be all right. Yeah, right. Father, be all right. Doctor says your father will be all right. What? What'd she say? She said she'd help you and take care of you. She says she loves you very much. Joe. Yeah. What's the sign for daughter? Easy. 